Hey everyone, how are you doing? Uh, today I want to go through a game between Rashid Nesmetnov and Vladas Mikenas. Again, this is another game from the match for the title of Masters. This is where Nesmetnov was playing a few games against the Master to try and become a Master himself. And this was game number 13, and a game that Nesmetnov called the best of the match. So in this game, Nesmetnov is playing with the white pieces and Mikenas is playing with black. And this game was from the year 1948. And the game proceeded as follows. Nesmetov played e4. Black played e6. We're getting to a French. Nesmetov played the move d4. There was d5. And now knight to c3. And black played bishop to b4. Pinning the knight on c3. And Nesmetov now played e5. And here black typically usually plays c5. But Mikenas went for an unusual approach. And played the move b6. And what this does is gets rid of black's bad bishop in the French defence. So basically the idea for black now is to put their bishop onto the a6 diagonal and swap it off for white's good bishop on f1. However, after this b6 move, white does get a bit of an initiative. So Nesmetnov played queen g4, attacking the g7 pawn. And interestingly, black now just retreated their bishop back to f8 to defend this pawn. Now typically I've looked at more modern games and white now usually plays the move bishop g5, attacking the queen, uh, and usually black plays queen d7, and in multiple games white just castled queenside, the bishop has come to a6, there's been a trade and white just follows in with f4, and after h6 plays bishop h4, and it's considered that white has a slight edge in this position due to the development of the pieces. In this game however, the move that was played by Nesmetnov wasn't bishop g5, he actually played knight h3. Which is an interesting move, maybe prepares to jump in to g5, or even just support f4 and jump in to f2. Mikenas now played bishop a6, so getting on with their plan of trading the bishops. But Nesmetnov scuppers this with the move knight b5, so blocks the bishop off. If bishop takes b5 here, white can continue with bishop takes with check. And after c6, play bishop g5, hitting the queen. If the queen moves, then bishop d3, c5, c3. And white has the two bishops, and you would consider that they've got a definite advantage in this variation. So going back to the game, I don't think black wants to take this knight off. Uh, instead, Mikenas played queen to d7, attacking the knight twice. Nesmet not defended with the move a4. And actually, black played h5 now, so driving the queen backwards. But as Nesmetov says in his book, uh, black drives a queen to a square it wants to go to, and it drives it back to queen g3. So it seems as though Nesmetov was actually satisfied with this particular move. He wanted to put his queen there anyway. Knight e7 was played by black, maybe preparing to play knight to f5 and hitting the queen again, which makes a lot of sense. But now this allows Nesmetov to swing his queen across with queen to c3, and now they're hitting the c7 square. To block this, black plays knight c6 and has a threat of their own. Bishop to b4 is a big threat, so the queen moves to d2. If black plays bishop b4, white can block with the move c3. Knight a5 is played, jumping in to c4, so Nesmetnov now plays b3 to stop it, and black plays the move c6. Weirdly, Nesmetnov hated this move, he thought it wasn't very good for black, but actually this is the best move considered by the computer. But Nesmetov now actually goes in for a good attack and sacrifices a pawn. He plays knight to d6 check, allowing black to take this off and pawn take d6. Instead of taking on d6 straight away, Mikenas played bishop takes f1, getting rid of his bad bishop. The king takes, and now we're into this position. So it's very easy for black just to pick up a pawn, queen takes d6, and all of a sudden black's just a whole pawn up. But after queen g5, white gets some counter-attacking chances. And after g6, they can play bishop to a3. And all of a sudden, white's dominating the dark squares. So for the pawn, white does have some interesting compensation. In the game, though, it can ask didn't want to take this pawn with the queen and played knight to b7 instead. So maybe taking the pawn with the knight. So bishop a3 anyway by white. c5 to blunt this bishop. And Nesmetov played rook to e1. So getting the pieces into the attack. And there may be some chances here to start taking maybe on d5, as we'll see later. 
Mikenas is in no rush to take this d6 pawn and plays knight to c6, hitting this d4 pawn, forcing white to take on c5. So pawn takes c5, pawn takes c5. White had a chance here to win the pawn back with queen takes d5. The e pawn is now pinned by this rook. But Nesmeno said he was worried about castling queenside. However, after running this through the engine, queen c4 seems quite nice. After queen takes d6, knight g5, rook d7 to protect the pawn. White has h4, a typical computer move in these variations. And after a trade of queens on d5, um, Stockfish actually recommended playing the move rook h3. And it said the game was even, but white has a definite edge in this variation. And we'll probably, for white, we'll double the rooks on the e-file. So I'm not really sure why Nesmetov was so worried about queen takes d5 here, though. Instead he played queen g5, though, attacking the g7 pawn and stopping black from castling queenside. Mikenas finally picks up the pawn then, queen takes d6, and black is a whole pawn up all of a sudden. Of course white could take on g7 here, with queen takes g7, but maybe black can castle queenside. And if white's really greedy, queen takes f7, black all of a sudden starts winning the position with moves like knight d4, and will swing the rooks across to f8 and g8. And because white's not castled, this king is very susceptible to an attack here. So Nesmetov knows better though than to go pawn grabbing, and instead he played knight to f4, attacking this d5 pawn because the e pawn is pinned. And Mikenas gets rather defensive. He plays queen to e7, offering the trade of queens, maybe tempting Nesmetov to take this g7 pawn. And he does actually accept, so if queen takes g7, the material is now equal, and the point is now black can just castle queenside, and I guess black may have thought that they can just play maybe rook to g8, and they'll have a nice attack coming down this file. However, I'm guessing that black missed white's next move. And what would you play as white here? Maybe you could pause the video for a few seconds and try and figure it out. But it's a very good move. So if you spotted this, you're on par with one of the legends of the game. He played knight takes d5. The point is the e pawn is still pinned, and if uh, rook takes the knight, the queen on g7 is attacking the other rook. So white's just won back a free pawn, and absolutely wrecked black's pawn structure. So Mikhail's played queen f8, offers the trade of queens once again. This time Nesmetov does accept, takes is played, rook takes is played, and the knight drops back to e3. A very nice square, protecting c2. And here Nesmetov said that Mikenas played a very good move, h4. So really sort of squashing white's position. In this part of the game, we have to remember that white is actually a whole pawn up due to black's mistake. And they've also got the bishop, so it looks as though white has a significant advantage. So it makes sense that black's trying to squash white's position. Play continued with f3. Black played f5. And then Nesmetov played knight to c4. So attacking e6. And for this reason, black played knight d4, protecting e6 and also attacking c2. It's important in end games or late middle games that you're not too defensive. If white decides to try and protect this c2 pawn with rook c1, then actually black just wins with knight takes c2. And if rook takes c2, there's rook d1 check, king f2, and black will pick up this rook on h1. So the tactics are actually in white's favour though. Nesmetov just calmly plays king to f2, and after knight takes c2, the protection of the e6 pawn is lifted, so this allows white just to play rook takes e6, and basically just trade pawns. Uh, knight goes back to d4, and Nesmetov continues to put pressure on black with rook e7, making sure that white is never on the defensive. And it's also very tempting for black to take this other pawn, knight takes b3, but again, as I said, Rook b1, white gets on the offensive with this move. Um, and after rook d3 to defend, there's a nice tactic with rook takes knight, king takes knight to a5, king c7, and white can just take on b3, takes, takes, and they'll probably win the c pawn on the next move. They've got two pieces for the rook and a very comfortable end game. So it's important that black doesn't go pawn grabbing here. Instead, Mikenas played rook to e8, offering the trade of rooks but again, Nesmetov is a super tactician and he spots another brilliant move. Bishop takes c5. The point is now after knight takes c5, he takes on e8, the rook takes, and then there's knight d6 with check at the end of it, king d7, and knight takes rook followed by king takes. And after the smoke's cleared, it's a rook versus two knights. However, 
white is also two pawns up at the moment. So usually the two pieces for the rook are actually better, but in this position, the pawn structure for black is so messed up that it's going to be easy pickings for this rook for white. Play continued on then with Nesmetov playing b4, keeping one of the pawns alive. Knight takes a4, rook to a1 attacking the knight, knight to b2, and basically there's a trade, rook, rook takes a7. Black tries to limit white by playing the move f4, but Nesmetov just swings a rook across to h7, attacking the h-pawn, and black plays a fork with check, king goes to f1, and knight takes b4, followed by rook takes h4. So now it's a rook and three pawns versus two knights and a pawn. So let's see how white deals with this position. The knight goes to d5, rook h7 to stop the king from coming up the board. There's a check thrown in, the king goes up, another check is thrown in. The king goes to safety, the knight goes back and the rook just swings across to the other side of the board, still limiting the king to the 8th rank. King f8 and now rook to a4, so attacking the knight on d4. Nesmetov said if the knight went to c2 here, he would have played rook to c4, attacking both knights at the same time. And if the king comes up, the knights are pretty much suspended animation for the time being because they're both attacks at the same time. And this gives white some time to play king f2, king e6, and then play g4. Takes, takes, king d5, and rook to a4. And this should be a matter of technique now for white. Two knights versus a rook and two pawns. Uh, the connected pass pawns are just going to be too strong and just going to roll down the board. And that should be an easy end game for white. So in the actual game though, play continued on with knight to e6. Protecting f4. g4 was now played. I don't think black wants to on pass on this because then white will still have two connected pass pawns. King g7 was played. h4. King f6 and h5. The knight jumped in to d5 and Nesmetnov pinned the knight on e6 for the time being. The other knight went to e7, and now there's a very clever move, just g5, check. If the king takes on g5, obviously Nesmetov can just take on e6. So king f7 was played to protect the knight, and now just rook to a5 to protect the pawn on g5. And basically now Nesmetov just wants to march the king up the board. Play continued on then, king f8, king g2, king f7, and the king is coming up the board. Mikenas attacks the rook, but it goes to f5, king g8, and now the king is finally in a good position up the board for white. Black attacks the rook and the pawn at the same time, uh, but now for rook d5 attacking the knight, it jumps in to c6, and white calmly plays the move g6. The connected pass pawns are ridiculously strong, king g7, Nesmetna plays rook d7 check, the king went to h6, it's checkmate. So it's forced backwards again, and just rook d6, attacking both knights at the same time. The knight jumps in to d8, and now there's just h6. And what can black do in this situation? The two knights are stunned again, both attacked so they can't move, they're protecting one another, and basically white's just going to march these two pawns up. And Mikenas resigned the game here, and Nesmetnov went on to win the game. So that was a really lovely game by Nesmetnov. Sacrificing material early on with the knight d6 check idea. I think Mikenas messed around a bit too much and allowed white to get back into the game. I think if this was a modern GM he would have taken that d6 pawn much more quickly and tried to solidify. But anyway that was a very interesting game by Nesmetov once again. But anyway thank you for watching this video. Hope you liked it. If you did please do drop a like, comment or subscribe and I'll see you next time.